Hello, hello. Today I decided to return to a battleship that I spoke quite highly of when I first reviewed it, and that is of course the Bismarck. Now, a fairly common mistake that I see these days uh, with people playing the Bismarck is that, well, first of all, they place far too much value on the secondaries. Yes, the second secondaries on this ship are good, but they are still RNG. Everything is RNG based, from where the shells land, to what kind of accuracy you'll have, to how many fires you'll start, if you actually even get the fires at the right time. And in order to get the most out of your secondaries, you almost have to give a lot of broadside in order to get all your secondaries firing. So, the secondaries are a nice bonus to the ship. But that's the thing, they are a bonus. They are not the primary source of damage. In fact, they are a minimal source of damage. They are a nice little extra and people tend to overvalue them significantly. So in this, in this game I'll be mostly focusing on the importance of positioning and uh, but well basically how to deal with the enemy and how to play your Bismarck to get the full power out of it, the full extent of it, without over relying on the secondaries. Because ultimately what makes the, what makes the Bismarck strong is not the secondaries. It's the fact that at, at its root, it is a turpitz. The same ship, they are sister ships for a reason. One has torpedoes, the other one has secondaries, but of course you also have a hydro. I'm gonna take a shot here. Now, you see I shoot only after I have, I'm already completing the turn. So any return fire, I will already be angled away. I take this basically to take it, get an idea of what I'm facing. So as soon as you shoot, you see how many people are shooting back. So they all just, she told me exactly where they are and where they are going. So that was a bit of a scouting expedition. I took more damage than I expected. But once again, thanks to my position, I'm able to get right into cover. And I only took that shot after I was already turned to safety. That was basically... Yes, it was a risk, but it was a very calculated risk because there was no chance of me eating any too much damage in that um, because because of the island position right next to me and that's something you want to go for in general when you when you go for damage dealing positions uh, you also want to have safety nearby if you're not grouping up with uh, let's say a DD for example the reason a DD in your division allows you to play much more aggressively is that you basically have a portable mobile safety screen in the form of a smoke that can save you but of course if you're not playing with the DD or they're simply, he, do, he doesn't have smoke or so forth. You want to always have an exit route available. You want to have an escape available before you start picking fights. Now this applies to a lot of the ships, but especially battleships where you have to plan ahead quite a bit. Here, for example, I know that if they start all in firing and engaging towards me, I can get into cover in front of the island on my left. So I'm picking the fights. I'm shooting, what was that, Hipper, that Citadel. And... I still have this option to disengage very, very easily at any point without exposing too much broadside. Now, what I was talking about, the strength of the ship, the strength of the ship is not the secondaries. Yes, they are a bonus, but ultimately it's the core of the ship, which is the same as the turpits. A couple of fast reloading guns, the fact that you are very tough to citadel, almost impossible at close range, and the fact that... Uh, your guns reload quickly and you're extremely tanky, especially when you angle, you're very, very tanky. Of course, superstructure hits can deal significant damage, but in general... Oh, someone is smoking up. Looks like some guy is smoking and hiding on the left, so I'm just gonna glide into the smoke and make use of this smoke. As I was talking about, see, if, even if the smoke hadn't been here, I could have just full speeded behind this cliff and gotten into cover. In this case, though, I'm just going to park in the smoke, slow down, and because, of course, I have hydroactive, which is another significant strength. I see Atagos and such over here, they might even be DDs going for B. So having hydro is, is one of the reasons why I'm able to so confidently sit here and deal damage to, this, to these targets. So, of course, if you see someone smoke, just like I recommend with cruisers and uh, gunboat DDs, make use of these offensive smokes. I mean, make use of these smokes, why not? Just because you're a battleship doesn't mean you shouldn't be parking in them and taking the maximum amount of use from them. Of course, there are some risks if the smoke puff is very small, if there are DDs around, and especially if you don't have hydro. But the reason why, especially the Bismarck, I consider it so strong, is because you can so confidently park into these smokes, thanks to the hydroacoustic surge, giving you much more safety than you can get with any other battleship. 
Now you notice my secondaries are only just now opening up, but I've already done, what, 60, almost 60k damage. And I can guarantee you my secondary damage is pretty much non-existent at, at this point. And this is kind of the optimal distance you want to be at. You don't want to get, like, point blank into them, because you don't really gain too much. I mean, if you're a turpid, you want to get closer because of the torpedo threat. But in Abyssmark, there's really not much reason to get any closer than this. The smoke is fading, so I start moving. I don't like this position simply because they, well, they're already pushing out on the, on the far right flank. So uh, I can get shot at from not only from in front of me, torpedoes, but the high, high potential of being shot at from the far right. So this I consider this position um, vulnerable now. I don't want to stay in this position anymore because there's too many angles and I, I'm unable to angle perfectly against all of them. So I'm just going to glide here. I'm probably going to ground. In fact, uh, sometimes you just ground on purpose. It's not a big deal. Yeah, as expected, they smoked up and they start to harass me. And this was why I wanted to get into cover here. Because this spot is vulnerable now. Uh, sometimes it's worth it to just ground to quickly reverse. Because it takes longer for you to completely stop your ship and start reversing again. Than it takes to just ground and get your ship to instantly uh, stop and then start moving again. Fiji, of course, gave me broadside. That's an pretty much guaranteed citadel because the Fiji is quite a squishy cruiser like all Royal Navy cruisers are. Taking a lot of damage but I'm not really too worried because well most of it is fairly light damage and I don't really have any fires I have my both my heal and my repair ready so there's no reason to panic. Oh, Atago shows himself of course I take the shot. I managed to kill off one of them it was the Nuremberg he showed me well a bit of a broadside but those kind of shots are fairly easy. And as you can see, my main damage isn't really coming from my secondaries. They are a bonus, and I'm not really pushing into anything with my Hydra. The Hydra is there to keep me, keep me safe and uh, able to utilize these positions that I am. But even then, I'm not fully relying on it, but I always make sure that I have this landmass next to me that I can duck behind and get into cover. This, of course, seeing as uh, this spot has gotten compromised, I don't feel like pushing in that way, because if I would, I would get shot at from all flanks. So instead, I go around the south. You always, wanna, you always want to have a uniform front of where the opponent is. You want to be able to angle against all opponents at once. If you go into a position where you realize that you cannot angle against all, you have enemies both on your right and on your left, and if you angle against one, you give broadside to the other, then that position is compromised. That's not a good position. That's not a good path for attack. So you don't want to be using that kind of that kind of path. So instead I go around this way where, first of all, I'll be catching them in their broadside because they have to angle against the position I was earlier. And they don't really have much room to angle either because of the landmass right next to them. First target, naturally, a squishy cruiser that gives me a broadside. I'm going to punish him for catching him by surprise by coming around this path. Instantly delete the shores. As I've said, you don't want to show a broadside in, in cruisers, especially not that one. Once again, what do I see in the front? Well, the DDs are, of course, leading or, well, out there hunting, but most importantly, they smoke up. So, my Hydra is active. I activated my Hydra as soon as I came around that corner, because, of course, there's a risk of uh, someone sending torps or something similar my way. So, I charge into the smoke with Hydroacoustic Search active. Once again, I am fairly safe from torpedoes. I slow down, I of course have him as my secondary target, but most importantly here is that I slow down. You don't want to charge into a turpid. Of course, the closer you get to a turpid, the bigger his advantage because of torpedoes. So I'm just going to chill here, focus him. He can't spot me Spot me at the Hatsuharo, is probably going to torp him. If I'm saving my shells for if it looks like he's trying to turn and torp, because if he does, I will shoot at his torpedo launchers and try to break them. But there's no need for that, he gets killed by the Hatsuharu, of course. A Turpid's charging into smoke like that, not recommended. He knew there were DDs here, so charging into the smoke like that was going to get him killed one way or another. So, honestly, pretty dumb move. For some reason, I swear I can't sit at El New Mexico's in higher tier battleships. Everyone else does it so easily, but I can't. But once my Hydra starts running out, so I start speeding up a bit, but then the Kutuzov smokes up. And my body lets me know that he's running his Hydra. Of course, a double Bismarck uh, division has exceptional synergy. 
Um, if you aren't aware, uh, you can basically chain your Hydra Acoustic Search so that when one stops using Hydra, the second one can activate his, and you can keep chaining him like that. And you can basically keep yourself um, fairly invincible towards DDs or Torpedoes in general, just in a two-man division. And that's, of course, one of the huge advantages of running a Bismarck division versus any other battleship division. And, of course, both of you targeting your secondaries at the same target is incredibly strong for the very same reason that uh, you get significant amount of fires and, uh, well, just an, a lot of secondary pressure on them. So, I let him get past me, I let him take the lead because he's the one running the Hydra now. Before this, I was in front of him because I had the Hydra active, but now that he's the one with the Hydra active, he takes the lead and I let him go first. That's fairly basic, but something, for example, if you division with your bodies, you might not consider, but it's worth it. You see those torps spotted eight miles away thanks to the Hydra Acoustic Search, so very, very easy for us to dodge them. And this way, also, if you lead your fleet, like if you have, you might have seen we have kind of leading the charge for our fleet on this side. Um, when you alternate with the one in, in charge running the Hydra, you also end up protecting your entire fleet from these torps. Because, well, no one will end up eating them thanks to this. Fiji showing broadside again. Naturally go for him. I might have aimed a bit high though. But then again, RNG is RNG. Oh, he died before my shells could land, I think. Now you see I got eight, seven seconds left on my Hydra. So I could potentially just push into the smoke if I wanted. But the Otago is more tempting than a single DD in a smoke. Quick shots at the Otago. And once again, you see my positioning though, I'm constantly... I, throughout this, until we actually made this push, I was always in a position where it was very easy to disengage into safety. And you see my heels, I've been running through my heels throughout the entire game, so I haven't actually... Ne I've never really gotten to a critical point, and I've been tanking a fair amount of damage, but I'm still not in a point where I'm suddenly afraid of my death. In fact, I only have one heal left, I burned through four heals already, which is fantastic. I think any battleship game I play, if I burn through all the heals, I probably will consider it a fairly good game. But... Even so, my secondary hits, what, 200? Have you seen my secondary hits do anything special? In fact, this is one of those games where I have really, really bad RNG with the secondaries. You might see I have only four fires. That's 193 secondary hits and only four fires, which is, of course, abysmal RNG. But this ship isn't about the secondaries. The secondaries are, as I said, a bonus. You don't you don't need the secondaries to do a lot of damage in this, or you don't need to have good RNG with your secondaries to do, do a lot of damage in the ship. The ship is more... It's, it's a sum of all the parts, it's just not one thing making it. And the very core feature here is, of course, the ship itself, which is the guns, the tankiness, and the hydrox acoustic surge all combined, which makes it such an excellent pushing, pushing ship. <laughs> Sorry about that, Freud and Slip movie. Um, of course, Gneisenau, now. Uh, I have Hydra available, so I'm not too afraid of the Torps. I don't want to give too much broadside. Now, this is the kind of case where you often see people give full broadside to the enemy battleship, just so their secondaries can get perfect arcs, but I actually angle in between every volley. There, of course, you saw I did actually almost 20k damage with a single volley on a German battleship. The rule, rule of thumb is when you shoot the German battleships, you don't want to shoot at the waterline, you actually want to aim a bit higher, because you can't get citadels anyway, so you should go for those guaranteed multiple hit salvos for those big chunky hits, instead of trying to go for those citadel perfect waterline hits, which will lead to a lot of your shells just landing in the water. Once again, I angle in between shells, because, well, the secondaries, I don't think they're that important. I mean... Yes, the secondaries are nice, but once again, I do not consider them that important. Um, one of the things that has become so common is that people overvalue the secondaries. I see Bismarck charge into me, and I see them give me perfect broadside, just so their bis just so the secondaries can shoot a few more shells and like have better area areas of fire. And I always wonder, like seriously, these shells the shells by themselves barely do any damage against battleships, and you really need to get that RNG with the fires for them to even really be useful. So why are people being so self-sacrificial with their HP when uh, 
the secondaries really aren't that special. I mean, they're good, and there's a reason why I recommend the build, but they are part of the whole package. And people tend to value them higher than their own HP, value them higher than the importance of angling, value them higher than the importance of positioning. Like, they give up a safe position to be able to make their... Like, they have a great safe position of 12 kilometers, and they give up that safe position just to push closer to try to make their secondaries work. And I don't consider it worth it at all. I think uh, it's rather silly, in fact. Now, of course, this, there's not much happening here. We chase the Benson, but he simply runs away. And the game ends soon after. You can see my damage. 209,000 damage. A nice chunk of uh, money, XP and such. Looking at the base score, base XP, well, our division, my division with my body, potent running uh, double Bismarcks. It was, of course, incredibly potent in leading our charge and, of course, dealing with the enemy charge. But the base XP speaks for itself. But the main point of my commentary, of course, follows up here. And you can look at my damage. Main battery damage, 191,000 damage. Secondary battery, 12,000 damage. And fires, 6,000. As I said, out of 234 shells, I only got 6 fires, so I had bad RNG. And that's kind of the thing with the secondaries, you can have bad RNG, which makes them unreliable. But ultimately, it didn't matter that I had bad RNG, it didn't matter that my secondaries didn't do so much, because the main source of damage, by far the most superior source of damage, is of course your main guns. And the fact that I stayed alive long enough to use them. In fact, looking at my damage received, I tanked 104k damage that game. And those numbers are far more important than getting 30-40k secondary damage only to not really do much damage in total. Anyway, that was my brief look back at the Bismarck and some of the common mistakes I feel people are making with this ship where they're simply putting too much emphasis on the secondaries and not enough emphasis on playing the battleship like a battleship.